Okay. So here are the rails. <laughs> and here is our show. Completely off. Completely gone today. What in the world? Derailed. <laughs> Yay, you're here. Welcome to the CK and GK podcast. Let's get going. Hello, hello. Hello. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to CK and GK. Let's actually do this. Uh, we're moms who are teachers. And we pretend to be adults on a regular basis. We know lots of things. But there's more we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so our approach to learning is all about fun and practicality. Come along and laugh and learn with us. Yay. Good job. Thanks. I've been practicing. <laughs> Today on the show, we have the fourth planet from the sun, Mars. Nice. Might be small, but still very mighty, named for the god of war and fiery red. It's Caitlin. Do you know that's also uh, my star sign is Aries, which is Mars, and all the all the things you just said, like really just, yeah. But here's the thing. I was born like on the cusp, so I have very, very Aries qualities and very Pisces qualities. Mm. But but I like that you just said that. I don't I don't even think that you realize that. But you just I well did done. it. Well done. Um, I have the winner of the best hair award. It's Marge Simpson, folks, right here in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> here she is. This is Jenny, folks. If you don't know, there's Jenny. Um, before we get to too much other stuff, I want to quickly do a shout out to. Let's be clear. This this podcast is probably my Twitter bestie right now. It's designated quizzers. You can find them anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's a husband and wife team, Jason and Lisa Marks. They have given us a shout out on their podcast, which was very cool. I basically like fangirled out over this shout out they gave us. But also, it was pretty exciting. But also, they love what we do and they want to do a collaboration with us. So um, look for that to come. They're going to basically pay us a tribute by drinking. Um, a beverage we've discussed on the show, but also they're going to do trivia with us. And I think I am so excited. Yeah. Here's the, here's the thing. You have to understand how their trivia game works in order to really get the full sense of what's happening because you can give them a theme. Like one of their themes was boy bands, right? But the questions don't have anything to do with boy bands. So like, for example, here's a question. They'll say something like, and I think I tweeted this at Lisa fairly recently, but it was something like the Christmas TV special, a Charlie Brown Christmas was written by Charles Schultz and it features the Peanuts gang. A peanut is a type of legume. Name three legumes. Wow. Like that's a- <laughs> like that's the way that, that is their funny. trivia show goes. And a lot of the times... Like, if I know it, I'm like, yes, I knew it. And I'm, you know, on my walk, like, hollering out loud, like, yes. <laughs> but yeah. their show is very fun to listen to. There's always a It's an earbuds in show. It is an earbuds in show. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And and you can tell that they just have a good time together. So They're having fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun. So Jason and Lisa Marks, designated quizzers. And I will uh, link their Twitter page in our show notes if you want to check them out. You can. So thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, let's go ahead and get into sports for the end of 2021. There's a lot going on. Okay. So this is not exactly news as okay. our tagline says. As our tagline says. It is news for our house. Okay. Okay. We were playing around with the ESPN app. I'm just kind of looking and see what's playing. Okay. And we discovered the greatest sport of all time. All right. I need to hear this. Okay. This game from India is a mix of checkers, tag, and rugby. Oh. <laughs> this is called... starting to sound like a designated quizzers podcast where all these random right. things sort of come together. <laughs> Explain this. It to is me. called Kabadi. Okay. And basically, 
the way this game works is Ro- Red Rover esque. Nice. They send one person over to the other side. That person's called the Raider. And he has to try and tag as many defenders on the other side as possible. Okay. There's a shot clock, like he has 30 seconds. When it's not COVID times, you have to chant Kabadi over and over again. And so when you run out of breath, that's oh. when you're out. Wow. But you have to tag as many people as you can and then make it back to the center line. Mm-hmm. Now, there's lots of other bits to this that you have to put your toe on this line and you can't step over this one. Da, da, da. But <laughs> we are obsessed. You have to watch this. <laughs> okay. The best part of Kabadi is not the blend of th- tag checkers and rugby no 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 the best part about it is the announcers oh i could see how that would be really fun golden okay (laughs) here are some bits we've heard from the commentators in kabaddi birds of a feather flock together (laughs) block shock solid as a rock nice that's a good one super athletes super action (laughs) And my favorite, the reason that I took notes on this, oh, man. <laughs> because we heard this guy say, I'm not kidding, roasted, shaken, point well taken. Oh, no. Oh, man. It's so good. I it's so like good. I feel that should be some sort of shake and bake ad. Oh, yes. That's so good. <laughs> How does the checkers fit in? Because you have to make it to the so- uh, to one end and then run back to your side. Oh. So it's kind of like King Me. Okay, okay. Do you want to tell them what I got John for Christmas this year? Oh my gosh, yes. John, (laughs) um, it is Packers, Green Bay Packers, checkers. (laughs) And instead of stacking when you get kinged, they have tiny little football helmets. (laughs) I'm so so proud of myself. I was like telling my husband, we have to buy this. And he's like, oh. Okay. okay. Like, but it's part of our thing that, that Jenny and John and Bryce and I do for each other is give kind of like just make you laugh sort of gifts. Like right. there's usually some thought behind it, but it's supposed to make you laugh. Like this. Just group- wait to see what we have for Sam. <laughs> and John was you like, oh, should we get him a sensory bin? And I was like, no, no, this other thing is so much funnier. Well, I mean, we already did. We've get- last year we got you guys a knife. Right. But not just any knife. It's the no knife forged, from forged in fire. And, knife. fire. <laughs> and I gave it to Abigail and said, "This is from the Kindreds for you." And she like claimed as her knife. <laughs> I was like, "Can we keep it in the kitchen? Is that or, okay? Or, I don't think you should have a knife in your, in your bedroom. bedroom." Yeah, while no. she you know narrates squirrel watch, right? Like <laughs> see her like with the knife like in front of the window, squirrel watch. My big thing with Jenny is that she loves monogrammed items, so. She'll like put a monogram on a sweatshirt and then she would wear it to work. And it was my favorite thing ever. I'm like, this is a sweatshirt. And she's like, but it's monogrammed. So it's fancy. (laughs) So I got her hat because she wears hats and I don't pull off hats, but she does. And so I got it monogrammed. But then I also gave her a penicillin stuffy. It's adorable. It's very cute. And it's in the shape of a penicillin. But every year we do this and it's just like something fun. But I saw those Green Bay Packers checkers and i was like i have to buy this it has to happen yeah no these are hilarious these are so amazing plus like you guys play games and it was it was just perfect and it was so topical I I lo- yeah I, d- I loved it um so okay so kabadi that's the game that i have to start looking at oh my gosh you have to watch it you have to watch it and it is like cricket in that you cannot figure out the rules just by oh, watching that makes we sense. had to find a youtube video where a guy explains it okay but it is so funny and so good. And I mean, these guys are real athletes. Like they have to run over there, tag people, and then not to get trampled on the way back. And unlike football, there is no down, right? Like if they pull him to the ground, that doesn't mean his turn is over. It's until he gets to the other line and tags back. So he could be crawling with four or five people on his back. And as long as he can still move, he's still in play. Whoa, that's intense. (laughs) It seems like the kind of game that would be banned on the playground. 100%. (laughs) Although it seems like the kind of game that would naturally form on the playground, right? Right. Yeah. (laughs) When Um, I taught seventh grade, um, some boys that I was uh, teaching invented this game, truck skip ball. Okay. It was full contact basketball. That sounds 
very seventh grade boy ish. Right. Yeah. And traveling was allowed. <laughs> so they would grab the ball and run around the court, slamming each other to the oh, ground, God. trying to make a basket. Yeah, we had to we had to put truck skip ball on the on the no list. Yeah, this is a game for when you play in your neighborhood when your mom right, 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 right. to the doctor. Play that at home. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> goodness. Okay. So I thought since um the end of the fantasy football season is upon us, I thought I would just give a quick update on what's happening with the teams. I can tell you I don't know anything about what's happening with our friend Jordan's team. You might know, but I don't know right now. Is she um okay? I I think she lost in the first round of the playoffs. Oh, okay. In Bryce and John's league, Bryce is out. And actually in, in the other league that he is in, he's out in that one too. It's been, it was a rough week for him. So he's done. John's in the championship. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. He's come in second many times. That's first loser. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's not like med school where the person who's second in the class still gets to be called the doctor. This is... Right, right, right. Person yeah. last in the class still gets to be called doctor. Exactly. But um, the the story that I feel like will remain relevant into the new year that I wanted to cover was this whole diplomatic boycott of the Olympic Winter Games that are coming in 2022. Wait, what? Yeah, that's a thing. So I wanted to just make sure we understand what that actually means. We know the Olympics are my thing at this point. If you've binge listened to any of our episodes, really any episode, I will probably talk about the Olympics, but, but with the winter Olympic games, there is a diplomatic boycott in place. The USA, Lithuania, Canada, the UK and Australia are all at least uh, as of like early this month are all boycotting the Olympic games. Now this does not mean the athletes are not participating. This means that a country's most senior officials, like their presidents or their prime ministers, etc., will not represent their country at the games in 2022. So they won't be making an appearance at opening and closing ceremonies, if that makes sense. Oh. That's what I know. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I know we're, man, that's we're all hard. devastated. The whole point is to like keep the country's political stance on what's happening clear without necessarily hurting the athletes who've worked so hard to get to the games in the first place. Right. Cause like completely okay, okay. boycotting the games would just be devastating for those athletes who've worked so hard and several, you know, it, there's always a situation for certain athletes where it's their last games, their first games. They never know if they're going to get to do it again. So this way they still get to participate. There's obviously reasons why this is happening. Right. Um, I do want to preface this by saying I am not a current world politics expert. Um, so I am going to be, trying to tread lightly here and make sure that I say this and provide as much context as possible. Um, but essentially, dude, I'm not an expert on the politics of my own house. Let me know the whole world. Come on, man. <laughs> well, I just want to make sure that I don't step on toes or say things that are wrong without prefacing that I'm aware that they might be wrong. Does that make sense? So yeah, there, mm -hmm. there's that. I just start my day that way. Y yeah. Fair point. You know, I, just, you know, just walk I'm into wrong. a room before I even start a meeting. Hey, I might say things that are wrong. <laughs> I feel like if you're coming to us for an expert opinion. Facts. Right. No. <laughs> I try, but I don't get them right most of the time. So to be clear, most of the nations that are participating in this boycott are saying that the, the Chinese government's treatment of the Uyghur people, Uyghur um, is, a, is a Muslim minority group in Northwest China. The idea is that these nations are saying that the Chinese government's treatment of these people is unfair for various reasons in which I will not get into, but essentially it sounds like this group of people is being persecuted in China. It's a protest on that. In addition, there have been some issues with the treatment of pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong, which, I mean, have been in the news over and over again throughout 2021. Another issue that has come up has been the safety of the Chinese tennis player Peng Shuai after she may or may not have accused a top former Chinese Communist Party member of sexual assault. She has said, no, I didn't say that. But then she did say that earlier on. So um, there's all these different things that are kind of factoring into this boycott. And that's another one of them. Um, this has happened before. It's not like this is a brand new thing. We did have a dip. It wasn't an official, like formal diplomatic boycott of the Sochi Olympics, but VP Biden, then VP Biden. 
this poor guy. He doesn't get to go to Olympics I know, at all. I know. He's, he, yeah. Um, or at least not winter ones, right? Because wasn't Sochi right. winter? Yeah. He and the Obamas did not go to Sochi. Um, and it was supposed to be a statement on the uh, Russian government's treatment of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, there was some some legislation happening around that was very anti-gay, uh, anti-LGBTQIA, all that. So they were they didn't go for that. And then there was a formal boycott um, in 1980 when the U.S. and like roughly 60 countries altogether boycotted the summer games in Moscow. And that was when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. That's the whole Charlie Wilson's war time period. But then it happened again, like the Soviet Union then boycotted the next set of summer games in 84. It's a political thing. It goes back and forth. But anyway, you will still see your athletes, provided that COVID and Omicron doesn't ruin it, you will still see U.S. athletes in the Winter Olympics. You just won't see any of the Biden family or any other top officials at these games. So that's what's going on with sports right now. I get it. I totally understand. I 100% understand. You you got to make a statement when people are being treated badly. Right. Absolutely. So in my mind, it's like if it doesn't hurt the athletes who worked so hard to get there and you're still making your stance known, you know, it is what it yeah. is. I can support that. It's fine. I just feel badly. I, the, being a president is so hard. At least yeah. you get to go to the Olympics. <laughs> I think there are other perks too. I like, can't name one. <laughs> didn't didn't Obama get to go to Franklin Barbecue and like cut the line in front of a whole bunch of people? Oh, there? okay. Yeah, you, you you get to cut the line <laughs> at Franklin Barbecue. <laughs> That's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a gem. Speaking of gems, Jenny, tell me what's going on. I'm sure you've had something because it's been Christmas and there's you've had family and all that. It has been Christmas. You know, over the last, let's say, half dozen years, the internet lights up in December about whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Regardless of where you land on the stance, <laughs> we decided to watch it at Christmas time. You have to withhold judgment. Because I know that you're screaming at your phones right now. But your children are so young. Why would you let them watch that? I mean. Abigail is 10. She understands that there are words that she can say and words that she cannot. Sure. We had to talk about how all the violence is fake. It's all special effects. What? Sorry. It's real. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, the same actor is in all the Harry Potter movies that we've seen. Mm -hmm. Robin Hood. Right. Prince of Thieves. Yes. He's so good. I love Alan Rickman. We um, had some, yeah, sad face. Um, so we had some talks beforehand to like prep, uh, to like get her ready for watching Die Hard. And okay. so, and we put it on after Kit, the three-year-old, had gone to bed. Perfect. But we needed to finish it the next morning because we all got too tired to finish it. So we had to watch the very last, the big scene at the yeah. end. We watched it the next morning with Kit. <laughs> We said to Abigail when the movie was over, so what do you think? Die Hard? Christmas movie? She says, no. Die Hard's not a Christmas movie. Mm. Then Kit, the three-year-old, looks straight at us. I saw a tree. <laughs> That's a Christmas movie. <laughs> well, all right. I mean. Can't argue with that. I have long come down on the side of it happens at Christmas time. Correct. So. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it happens during a Christmas party. Yes, a company yes. Christmas party is when this happens. To me, if it happens at Christmas time, there's a good chance it's a Christmas movie. It's not, you're not going to get, you know, the Home Alone feels the same way that you Oh, so would. you think Home Alone is a Christmas movie? 100%. <laughs> How and do you feel about the Santa Claus? Is that a Christmas movie? That, <laughs> first of all, if you have any questions about the reality of Santa Claus, you need to watch The Santa Claus with Tim Allen. I agree. It answers every question that your kid might ever have about Santa and the logistics of what it takes to be Santa. And that is my favorite Christmas movie. And I will die on that hill that it is the best one, hands down. Have you seen 8-Bit Christmas? No. What is with this? With NPH. No. Okay. My favorite Christmas movie until a week ago <laughs> has always been White Christmas with Bing Cosby. 
Oh, that's a good one too. It's a it's classic. It's a great one. Danny Kay, Rosemary yeah, yeah, Clooney. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. but it's great. It's a classic. But it just got knocked out of the number one spot by Eight Bit Christmas. Okay. Okay. So, NPH is a dad, and his eleven-year-old daughter wants a cell phone for Christmas. Okay. And he said, "You're not getting a cell phone. You're okay. not." And you know, she's arguing back and forth. She's angry and frustrated, you know, like a kid would be. Uh, like an 11-year-old. Yeah, exactly. Right, right, right. And they go to his parents' house for Christmas, and he discovers his Nintendo from when he was a kid. And he says, mm. oh, let me tell you about the year I was 11, and all I wanted for Christmas was a Nintendo. Yeah. So it has this kind of princess bride feel that there's events happening now, and then there's the storytelling part of the movie. Okay. So you – you get this bounce back and forth where Neil Patrick Harris is talking to his daughter and then yeah. you go back to the story of when he was a kid. Okay. It kind of is like a Christmas story in okay. that, you know, the kid really wants the Red Ryder BB gun. This is, he really wants the Nintendo. Yeah. Um, it is full of nostalgia for those of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s. Oh, I like that. It stars Lenny from um, That Thing You Do. <laughs> I don't remember the guy's name, but you know what I'm talking about? He's yes. the dad. <laughs> And Brianna from Grace and Frankie as the mom. Oh, okay. She is a teacher. And there are some moments that are so relatable where, like, she's sitting at the counter with her kids waiting to find out if there's a snow day. And she says, don't get disappointed. Don't get disappointed. She's talking Um, to herself. Talking to herself. (laughs) Um, But the movie is just so good. Okay. It is such a family tale. Okay. Um, the four of us watched it together and loved it. Okay. There are some moments where you're going to need an entire box of tissues. Oh. But it is by far the greatest Christmas movie ever made. All right. I can. I'll. I'll get behind it if you're. If you're that into it. I just. I have to say. It is so good. I mean, the Santa Claus is just. It just has the most special place in my heart. Of course, Home Alone is right there with it. My husband's favorite is Home Alone. And I think at our house, number two is actually the favorite. I feel like number two is more Christmassy. It feels mm. like because you get to see New York and, and all New that York. stuff, yeah. I, it does feel very Christmassy. Um, I will say that my son, who, especially when he was younger, but also still now, looks like Macaulay Culkin. Oh, for real, for real. <laughs> like we were thinking like when they do the reboot, not Home Alone that they just released with Ellie Cooper. Right, 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 right. right. But like when they do a reboot, we will sign him up to play the part because he looks just like Kevin McAllister. You don't need to wait, Caitlin. I know. When I was growing up, (laughs) my dad made movies. I'm not talking about home movies like, oh, hello, it's Christmas morning. Like he, we did a Batman movie where he like made costumes for everyone. And there was a storyline. Hold on. Is this like Michael Scott, like... Oh, like Agent oh. Michael Scarn, Golden Face yeah. sort of situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's that. It's one hundred percent that. And like my mom is playing Alfred, and You're freely yeah. admitting all of this. <laughs> my sister was King Tut, and like he put <laughs> pants on her head to like make this turban. And oh my gosh, it was this, so good. It was I'm so sure, good. My brother is I'm Batman sure. on a big wheel that my dad like made a Batman medallion Stop. for. No, <laughs> I'm sure. Your family thought it was good. No, oh, it was. <laughs> it's amazing. He also made a movie about my brother to the Jaws theme, and it was like a. Oh, it was supposed Lord. to be a movie trailer where my brother is like Godzilla or something. Um, and Wait, he's there Jaws in his little and baby. At the same time, right? Well, no, like it has the Jaws music. Oh, at, but okay. it's like he would be my brother would be the shark. Okay. Like, okay. Um, it's a monster movie. It's a trailer, but. My brother is in a um, neon green and uh, striped Speedo. Oh, my. As a baby. Oh. So he's got this giant baby belly hanging over his Speedo. He looks like a middle-aged European man. <laughs> it's hilarious. These things are gold. You can make Home Alone at your house right I mean, now. 
Yeah. Yeah. He's my son is absolutely reckless enough that we could probably do that too. Honestly. I'm sure my dad would loan you the camcorder. I mean, (laughs) Oh, perfect. Is it one of the big ones? Oh, it's the big one. Oh, Oh, it fits in a suitcase. It it was its own piece of checked baggage when we would travel. Nice. (laughs) That's huge. Like a news camera from the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, we're watching this movie a lot. I think we've easily watched it since like Thanksgiving, probably watched each Home Alone about six times, maybe more. Okay. We, we love it. Anytime it's on TV, we'll turn it on. Like we just, we love that movie. So, um, my son who also is very aware that some words are for adults to be using and for home and other words are not is sitting there one day talking about Harry and Marv and how they're so silly and how like if they come near his house, he would have to figure out what to do. Right. You're right. And we're like, Oh, okay. So, you know, would you do the same things that Kevin McAllister does? And he goes, no, I would kick their ass. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you went to what now? And he just says like deadpan. I would kick their ass. All right. <laughs> like you can't even it is what happens in the movie. There's I was just like, okay. And then I turned to my husband and I'm like, uh, uh, what do what, do we say anything? And he's like, no, just let this one go. So I think we just let it ride. And we were like, yep. later on, we were like, you know, you, you shouldn't say things like that. And he was like, yeah, I would do it though. I'm like, okay, so you're done okay. down. Okay, great. <laughs> so that was my ridiculousness for the oh, sure. week. We yeah. were watching number two, the New York one. Yeah, yeah. Listing all of the things that would have killed those people. They do that every year. They do like a, a what their medical bills would be thing every year. And they watch the price of the, the medical bills okay. increase exponentially it's unbelievable okay yeah yeah yeah. like we were saying that would be so fun to watch this with a medical professional and say yeah "Yeah." okay so i'm glad to know that's out there yeah i mean getting hit in the head with a brick like that's it you're dead if you want to watch my husband who you know him he is he likes to laugh but he's a fairly like serious put together kind of dude right like you wouldn't know that he's the man has two law degrees (laughs) you don't need to say more right he um will cackle like an eight-year-old when that first brick hits Marv in the face like he will I mean he turns bright red he has little tears in his eyes because he's laughing so hard that is funny and you have like you know there's the part where he holds the fingers up and he's like how many fingers am I holding up and it's it's clearly three but he says eight so how you go from three to eight is nobody knows but he's just like watching these bricks come down and you hear the boom 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 yes yes yeah. And, yeah. and my husband and then his hat burst. like has a shape of a brick in it right like the second brick would have killed him. him the second brick would have killed him but oh, yeah. i mean watching my husband cackle out loud cackling in hysterics over those bricks is just a, a sight to behold it's one of my favorite parts of the christmas season <laughs> Are you getting tired of having Christmas stuff up? Um, I started taking things down this morning. Yeah. I am not looking forward to undecorating the tree. No, that's my least favorite part for Mm -hmm. many reasons, right? Like it makes me sad and it sucks. It's hard work. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not looking forward to that, but I have been walking around the house. And when I see a Christmas decoration, putting it on the dining table. Oh, there you go. And then um, I had this moment this morning where I felt like Target was reading my mind. I got a text from them saying, hey, your new weekly ad is here. Nice. I never click on that text. No. I never do. Uh -uh. But today I clicked on it. I said, man, I really need storage bins. Today is a Target day. Target tells you what you need. It was the first thing in the ad. Oh, yeah. Storage bins, first thing. And I said to John, I cannot believe this. It's like Target read my mind. He said, Jen, like everyone is undecorating their house for whatever holiday they celebrated in December. Yeah, and I always get the red and green ones for Christmas so that it's obvious in my storage area which ones I need to pull down. But those sell out quickly. So if you want Christmas bins, you need to go get those pretty quickly because they will sell out. Yeah, I think I have three. I have one that's just for ornaments. And I have one that I put all of our lights in. And then I have one that I put like every other thing in. My husband has a very extensive Nutcracker collection. So we store all of those at my mother-in-law's house. 
So we need like seven boxes. Yeah. I was going to say, I need a lot more than three. I have no control when it comes to buying Christmas decorations. Um, if it comes in a Buffalo check pattern, I probably own it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> is it monogrammed? I mean, <laughs> our stockings are. Um, my dog is attacking a mirror right now. <laughs> Real life, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my, he thinks it's a dog. My cat is biting on my fingers down here. So, yeah. This is our New Year's episode. <laughs> this is our this is our welcome 2022 hopefully you don't suck as much as 2020 and 2021 episode so her handle was girl with the microphone or microphone girl oh i don't know her. um i don't know her that was um, she's very vocal in politics oh some of her tactics and some of her beliefs i align with and some of them i don't but i find her extremely funny the post that she did the other day was, Dear 2022, the bar is so low. Right. You just have to step over it. Right. Like, that's it. That's all you have to do. <sighs> and you can be better than 2021 and 2022. 2020 and 2021? Uh, yeah, sorry. Yes. No, it's okay. I don't know how else to put this, but those two years have not been great. And she's got a point. Whoever she is, that's an absolutely correct statement right now. Because I just can't with the way these two years have gone. I do the uh, annual stocking stuffing. And this year in my stocking, um, if you look at my hair tie, it is a hair tie that has a little tiny bow on it. It does have a little bow. Yeah. And it makes me feel fancy. So uh, there's these little, I don't know the brand and we're not sponsored. So I'm not going to even mention it, but um, they have little, they're like these regular old, like old school, stretchy elastic hair ties, but they have a little bow on them and they make me feel fancy with my mom bun. So there's that. And the other one is uh, because we all need a little help with the stress that comes from the holidays. There's this This one, I will say the brand because this is amazing, but um, this brand makes like acne fighting stuff. Um, One of them is like those hydrocolloid patches that you put on your skin and it like sucks all the goop out of a zit that you might have. But this is their lightning wand and the brand is Hero and it's Hero's lightning wand. And you just like, if you have like a, maybe like a zit that you picked at or a zit that's going away, but it's still kind of red, you just rub this on there a couple times a day and like 24 hours later, you'll see a difference. It's pretty awesome. So those are my two. Awesome. Yeah. Both of those things are lifesavers right now. I want to give credit where credit is due. Her Instagram handle is the girl with the microphone. Oh, perfect. I gotcha. She's too funny. I'll have to look her up. The bar is so low. Just show up. Just step over. Step over it for sure. Yikes. Okay. So speaking Speaking of of the new year. Yeah. And the bar being so low that you just have to step over it. I want to shy away from this whole idea of like new year, new you kind of stuff. Cause I think that that's right. sort of toxic thinking. Um, but well, and it makes February really hard. Right. Absolutely. Because um, most new year's resolutions are broken by Valentine's day. Yes. And it makes you feel like, what was the point of this? I've set well, myself like up for failure. Right. You failed yeah. with that. You know, we did want to talk a little bit about the whole, I'm using air quotes here, self-care movement and, and phenomenon. And, and I have my own thoughts on this, but I don't know about you, but the days between Christmas and new year's, I literally have no idea what day of the week it is, what the date is or anything like that. Like I don't, I, as the meme that's going around says, I already have my sweatpants picked out for new year's Eve. I know that day, but I don't know any other day. So for me, like this is a time where if I'm not confused by the day of the week or what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm typically trying to reflect on the year. And so it's driving me kind of crazy. So the whole self-care thing is actually probably pretty important. And I hope that if you are going to make resolutions, which a lot of people don't anymore because of that February feeling where you feel like you've let yourself down, that you decide that you're going to incorporate a little bit of um, taking care of yourself into your new year. Yeah. I am so tired of the bubble bath and the sheet mask. So, So I feel like that term gets super overused, especially during the pandemic. I think often it's indicative of this toxic positivity that we're all trying to inflict upon other people, I guess. Um, I feel like it's a term that is used by, for, among women in particular. Take care of yourself. Oh my gosh. But like, I think 
even more so in the fields where people are in the business of serving others, right? In the medical field. So doctors and nurses having self-care shoved down their throat, teachers having self-care shoved down their throat, mothers having self-care shoved down their throat. I think it's super unfair to do that to people because self-care does not fix you when you are on the verge of burnout, right? Or you are already there. Like you've already lost it. And it cannot be an event. No. Right? No, 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 it, no. Um, it cannot be, oh, well, next Saturday, I'm going to go get a manicure. That's going to be my form of self-care. No. That might, that might be a moment where you are caring for yourself. But self-care, I believe, is a mindset. Um, and it is, it is about being present. And it is about knowing yourself and what you need in the moment. Exactly. And I, I want to be clear that it's not a rescue thing, right? right? If you are having some sort of um, mental health crisis or you need something that is an emergency response, self-care is not that thing. If you're in the middle of a panic attack and someone says, oh, go take a bubble bath, it'll make you feel better, you're going to want to throat punch that person. You're not going to be <laughs> in the mood for, right? Like, Right. I mean, it's just the truth. So I do also want to say we are not doctors and we are not mental health professionals. And if you feel like you are a place where you are constantly needing or activating your emergency response techniques all the time, please seek help from someone who is a licensed professional. I, Jenny and I both have therapists. I will tell you point blank, I take medication to help me with my mental health issues. Please go I do, do what you need to do. I'm just not going to disclose your medical information. <laughs> no, thanks. But, you know, I've, I've yeah. said it a lot, um, online yeah. before. Anyway, I think that we can both agree that our definitions of self-care is going to be what the things are that you do for yourself that make you feel like the most yourself. So whether that's if you're a parent, what did I do for myself that made me feel good before I had kids? Or what things make me feel like I'm a good parent, but also don't make me feel crazy at the same time. Right? Right. Stuff like that. So I did some reading. Okay. And um, everyone mark it on your calendar. I'm actually going to cite a source. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> She'll give me the source and then we'll put it in the show notes. So you can take a look at it later if you want. Emma Lowe wrote an article for Mind Body Green. Uh, she interviewed uh, nine different dads about how they take care of themselves. Oh, and one of the things I thought was really interesting was someone said um, a high level conversation. Oh, that's interesting. So often we define self-care as quiet time, meditation, time when you're alone with your thoughts. But yesterday I was over at my parents' house and we were trying to name their house. Okay. And they have been watching all of these Christmas movies on nice. Hallmark. And they're always like, welcome to, you know, Reindeer Manor. Oh. We're so happy that you've come to Peace and Rest Lodge or whatever. So they're, <laughs> they're, um, they're naming their house. And they are coming up with, I'm not even kidding you, the most depressing names for their house. Yikes. My parent, my dad is on the verge of retirement. This is their last house. They are very excited about not moving every three years. Thank goodness the military, right? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So my mom is saying like, oh, end of the road, the but, final house. And I'm like, that's, like and I said, I am your kid. I do not want it. I do not want this to be your death no, house. Right. And I said, really and mom, coffin. you know, I'm putting you in a home. This isn't the last place you're going to live. <laughs> I'm sure she loved that. But it was fun for us to start coming up with ideas to name their house in a way that was peaceful and a chance to exhale. Like, what what is it about rest, but not like rest in peace, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds but like that was a stimulating conversation that it would was have a stimulating some conversation. Laps, and right? it was fun because my dad's like, you know, searching, oh, well, if we say it in Swedish, it's da da da. And, you know, it's just, oh, Lord. it was fun for us to all be creative. Yeah. And it was, you know, about 30 minutes we spent brainstorming ideas to name their house. This is not an important conversation. No. This was this was not something where we were solving the problems of the world. We were not necessarily <laughs> agreeing on the names. I said multiple times, I don't want to talk about how you're dying in this house. Like, no. let's, let's move on. Yeah. Um, I said, you were turning 65, not 95. Like, we do not need to call this the end of the road in. Like... <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, how depressing. Funny. Funny, yeah. If you're curious, I think they are settling on Bel Cello, which is Italian for beautiful sky. Okay. Because they have this great view either in the daytime or in the nighttime because they're way out in the country in a neighborhood that is very aware of light pollution and all of the street lights in their neighborhood turn down so that you can see the stars. Oh, that's nice. I like yeah. that. So all that to say... <laughs> what, <laughs> it was the you, conversation, was right. the self-care. But that's that's a fair point. One of my things that makes me feel recharged and makes me feel like myself again after a long day or in the middle of it is laughing with friends, which is why you and I enjoy doing this podcast because we right. have yet to have a single conversation where we aren't laughing about something. And that's where we got the idea to, to do this. Oh my God. In the podcast I was talking about earlier in the designated quizzers podcast this morning, I listened to it and there, no joke. There is a part where Lisa spits out her drink everywhere. Like she just the spit laps and it's all over the place. And she, she's telling me that it hurt really bad because you, you should not choke on tequila. <laughs> <laughs> she just spit like you can hear, you just hear Ugh. this like, and there's just liquid everywhere. She's Ugh. like, Oh my God, it's everywhere. And they left it all in. It's so funny. <laughs> um, anyway, that's neither here nor there, but laughing is something that does help me recharge, whether that's at a podcast or with friends, usually with friends will, or my husband will really be the way that I recharge because I feel like myself again when I'm having that. That's how kind of you to say with your husband instead of at. (laughs) (laughs) My my husband is, he's pretty self-conscious about that kind of stuff and he doesn't really do things that are overly silly most of the time he does things that he knows will make me laugh but he doesn't it's never like a mean malicious i'm laughing at you oh no 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 ridiculous but no No. it's usually with him which is very nice you're right i was pretty proud of myself i wished my husband a happy 40th birthday on facebook (laughs) (laughs) he's turning 36 Didn't he just, he just had his birthday, right? He just had his birthday. And I made this great post, like little gifts on there. Like, I'm so excited to, I can't wait to see what four more beautiful decades will bring you. Oh my gosh. I'm sure. My birthday is in a week and a half. I cannot wait to see what he does for me. He's going to dish it out. He's going to dish it out for you. That's really funny. People laughing like wouldn't do it for them. But for me, right. it's like absolutely my form of self-care is laughing with people. But let that be the theme of today is figure out what it is that makes you feel like yourself and then be intentional about trying to do that. So do you know what kind of self-care is good for you? Oh, yeah. Anything creative, naming a house. I love to dress up. Yeah, you do. I love a good costume. Yeah, you do. I like to make costumes for other people too. So we'll (laughs) do a themed movie night and all wear costumes that we made out of just clothes in our closet, right? I'm not Mm -hmm. talking about like sewing something. Right. You know, I don't do that. So Jenny, I think I've told this story once before, but we did a theme week at our school. The last day was 70s day. And I dressed up like one of the girls from Dazed and Confused when they're like squirting ketchup and mustard all over everybody else. I think I intentionally was channeling Joey Lauren Adams from Dazed and Confused. But Jenny, I I can't even say walks up. She literally rolls up to a crowd of us all dressed in our 70s gear because she's wearing roller skates and has her hair feathered out. And she's like, I'm so happy. (laughs) She's just like over the moon excited for this day because she got to dress up. It was hysterical and amazing. Jenny loves a good dressing up party. But I have, I, so I found a what kind of self care is right for you quiz. And it only, oh my gosh, please put it in the show notes. Well, I'm going to do it for you right now. Oh my gosh, I love it. And see if you're, so you think it's anything creative. I will tell you right now. Mine is like a get up and go. Like I need to go for a walk. I need to have solo time. That's my self-care. Like, you know, I get up early in the morning and I exercise because I just need that for myself. But I Well, on a work day, yeah. I have discovered that the best thing I can do for myself, I get up before everyone else. Yeah. And I've never been this person. Right. I normally the how fast can I make my morning routine? Sure. Do my makeup in my classroom before the kids get there. Like <laughs> lay my clothes out the night before. Like I I want to be up and out of the house in 12 minutes. That's impressive. I am not that person. Well, I have changed this okay. year. 
I have started waking up much earlier and sitting and drinking a cup of coffee by myself Yep. before I do anything else. Good for you. And I am not talking about like a 45 minute, like I'm going to journal, da, da, da. that's not me. No. I know it works for some people. Right. And, you know, my uncle is one of them. And my mom even warned me before um, my uncle Steve came to visit. She says, just so you know, Steve's going to get up before everyone else. He's going to make himself a cup of coffee and he's going to sit and read. Don't be creeped out when you come down the stairs and see a man <laughs> sitting in your living room. <laughs> That's amazing. So I know that that works for a lot of people. But for me, it was it's just quiet time, just sitting there drinking the coffee and planning out, okay, here's what my day is going to look like mentally and preparing mm -hmm. myself. Okay. So let's do the quiz. Okay. So- um, this I got from a website called reachout.com. I'm pretty sure it's a Australian website, but I will put the link to this quiz in the show notes. Um, you it's know only me. five questions. Love Australia. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, in an ideal world, which wake up routine would you choose? Get up early and exercise, wake up naturally with the sun and a morning meditation or a sleep in then cooking an elaborate breakfast. Ooh, sleep in and cook elaborate breakfast. Okay. When you have a spare hour away from the family, what is the first thing that you do? Work up a sweat, daydream, and maybe watch a show or put your headphones in? Daydream. The question is very simple. I am an outdoor type, a homebody, or a whatever takes my fancy kind of person. An outdoor type. Okay. When it comes to time management, I'm a little early, right on time, late, but there's always a good reason. Is there not an option bad at it? No. <laughs> I believe that's option ADHD. That's not the same thing. <laughs> when it comes I know to time management, I am. I am still working on the definition, let alone right. the skill. Right. Have you um, seen those no, memes I'll... of like people who have like a sign taped to their back that says, please do not talk to me because I will get lost in a conversation for two hours and get nothing done. Like that's me. I, right. that's how I am. Okay. So again, thank a goodness for early. the train. Otherwise <laughs> I would never be to work on time. I get it. I get it. Like if I miss the train, I have to drive. I don't want to do that. You know which one I am. I'm always the late one. I always have a reason, but, and it's not for lack of planning. It's just that I'm always late. So when it comes to time management, I'm a little early, right on time or late, but there's always a good reason. Late. Okay. And there's not always a good reason. <laughs> one of my reasons for being late to your house, like 40 minutes late to your house was that there was a praying mantis on my window. So understand it was a good reason for my son. It was not a good reason for me. Anyway, oh no, Abigail... One. Abigail was she late to the ALT one time and we told the therapist, I'm so sorry that we were late, but there was a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Choose one of the following to do right now. Stand up, raise your hands to the sky and stretch. Shut your eyes, breathe in for four, hold for four and exhale for four. Otherwise known as square breathing or grab a scrap piece of paper and have a scribble. Ooh, scribble. Okay. You are a creative self-carer. Congratulations. Yay! You got it right. It says here are a few easy things that you can try right away is carry around a notebook and a pen and take 10 minutes in the morning and afternoon and evening to doodle, discover new music or podcasts, uh, and make a Sunday baking day to choose a new recipe and test out each week. Oh, that's fun. That's a good one. I like that one. But this quiz lives on reachout.com and, um, I, again, I got a different one from Jenny. So I'm guessing. Which one did you get? Get up and go. Get Mine go. was, I chose a couple of the same answers as you, but I like start my morning with a workout and of the, <laughs> when that last, yeah, I know. In that last question. <laughs> did you guys I hear do. that? It works out. The last question, which was, which would you do right now? Right, I would, right. I would stand up and stretch because that's what okay. makes me feel better. But stuff like that is, is my self-care. So the message that I, I want to have people come away with for me is that self-care again is not a rescue thing this is a you need to do this every day this is an incorporate this into your daily routine sort of situation i think that you need to promise yourself that you're going to make it a priority for yourself and it doesn't have to be a long time right like jenny's thing of having a coffee by herself in the morning that's what five ten minutes oh yeah yeah ten minutes tops i can suck that coffee back <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm longer than that. Like I need, I need more time. I also want to make sure that if, if you, if you think you're going to need five or 10 minutes for self-care, try doubling that for the first little bit of it while you're trying to work it into your routine. You might not have five or 10 minutes, which is what people normally use as an excuse for not incorporating self-care into their routine. But if you're using that as an excuse, then you probably really need it more than anyone, honestly. 
Right. I read another article that was uh, five reasons that you feel guilty for having self-care. The author, it's Heather Mulder, and it's published on her blog, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, CourseCorrectionCoaching.com. Nice. The, the thing I thought was really interesting was her first point was all about this definition thing. Yeah. Her yeah. first point was all about, you define it as an indulgence and you're saying, you know, self-care is this big event and it probably has a cost associated with it, whether it be no. um, financial or time. And the idea is when you are weaving your version of self-care into your daily routine, uh-huh. It's now you have to just be conscious of what you're doing as self-care, right? Like you said, you want to laugh. Like, you know that while you fold the laundry, you like to listen to a podcast. Yes, absolutely. So I find something funny during that time to listen to. And it's five or 10 minutes where I'm folding the laundry. Right. And you define it for yourself and say, while I am folding laundry, I am also doing Mm self-care. There's other little things that I do throughout the day where I say, okay, This is the time that I'm taking for self-care. While I am brushing my teeth, I am going to also get out the toothbrush I use to clean my jewelry. Oh. And say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to clean my ring today. Nice. It's going to take seven seconds. I use toothpaste. It's fine. Don't, don't do it. If you don't do it, it's totally fine. (laughs) I use toothpaste to clean my jewelry. It's fine. But that makes you feel better. But it it makes you feel better because I put it on. I'm like, oh, look at that. Spend 30 seconds cleaning it and it's all sparkly now. Okay. And for me, it's just a, it's a, this is what I need to do in order to feel like myself. So like with my son being home during the day, because it's the winter break for our kids in town. And And mom and dad can hardly wait for school to start again. Bingo. So when that whole thing started, I said point blank to my husband, I'm going to need to be able to go for my walk on weekdays. I don't have to go on the weekend. I usually don't go on weekends, but during the week, I need to be able to have that hour and 10 minutes to myself where I go on my walk and it's a long one, but it's something that I have to do. Right. It was very much a, absolutely. If it's what you need, then you need to go do that. We've had that conversation. And I realized that's a luxury. Not everyone's, you know, partner or even has a partner that can support that, but maybe there's a way that you, you know, can swap a chore with someone, maybe, you know, and, and that can be a way that you can go get the time that you need to go get. I don't want to encourage self-care as an indulgence. It doesn't have to cost money. I don't even really like the phrase self-care anymore because it feels so toxic and it feels so like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And that's not at all what I'm going for. I just want to make sure that people understand, like there is a way to incorporate this into your routine, but it does need to be something that is a routine for you. Right. And you can start small and see how it adds up. Another article I read mentioned self-care for kids. Ooh, I like that. Um, and it was more about teaching the concept of checking in with yourself. Yes. And, you know, in education, we say, teach everything, assume nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just the idea of talking to your kids about checking in with themselves. And what does that mean for you? What do you like to do? Is a version of self-care playing catch? Or is it um, spending a few minutes quiet in your room playing? What do you like to do? And just kind of teaching that mindset of it's normal. Mm -hmm. to check in with yourself. It's normal to say, okay, I'm not feeling right. I want to go do something for me. I hate to get cliche, but refill my cup. You know, you can't pour from an empty one. We all heard that. Right. Put your own mask on on the airplane before your kids. Right. 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 That kind of thing. Right. I don't want to say kids have it easy. That's not what I mean by, but kids are far more able to pick out the things that they like to do. Right. More than adults can. I'm trying to think when I was teaching, especially when I was like teaching early on and no, I didn't have kids then, but I mean, you know, this, when you're first starting out as a teacher, if you're not, if you don't have kids, those kids are your kids and you spend way too much time dedicated to that job. It was a lot. I think that I probably couldn't have told you what my hobbies were during that time. I don't even know if I had hobbies during that time, right? But kids, because their job is to play and to learn and they like to do that in different ways, kids could tell you what their hobbies are and what recharges them. I don't think that my five-year-old would say, oh, I get recharged by playing basketball in our front yard. Right. If I said, what are some things you love to do? He would probably be able to tell me, I love to draw. I love to play basketball with my dad and my mom in the driveway. And I love to build with Legos. 
but those would be things that he would probably use to recharge. So, I mean, if you don't have hobbies right now, you definitely need self-care because you don't know what it is that makes you happy on the side. So you need to figure those things out for yourself. But I just, I love the idea of talking to kids about it and saying, you know, the things that make you happy, tell me what some of those things are. And let's take some time out of our day to do those things. That's right. really special. That's really special. And that time could be three minutes. Mm-hmm. Right? We're not talking about a 90 minute bath. This isn't, no. you know, a trip to the spa that is going to have a three digit price tag. No, those are events that are indulgent and there's nothing wrong with those things. But Oh, that's... dude, there is nothing wrong with those right. things. But I can't that's... rely on that for my no. self-care because I won't get to it. Right. It will, it will be crossed off the list of things that are important for me to do. It's just not right. a thing that I will do. But taking 15 minutes a day to drink coffee in peace or whatever it is that makes you feel good for 15 minutes, there's nothing wrong with doing that at I mean, all. Crank up Billie Jean and turn down the windows Nice. and sing as oh, loud as you can. If you know, you know, but that car song is always the one, the song that comes on right before you turn off your car so you have to sit and listen to it for the rest of it oh that's yeah. the best song that's self-care for sure right for me. being right. in the car by myself it feels amazing oh so find that is there ever a time where you can be in the car by yourself and it will make you feel good to bust out some billy eilish or keen do you remember keen nobody remembers keen no it's the somewhere only we know you would you would remember the song yeah it's a they were amazing. Anyway. Okay. What else do we need to talk about with this topic? Anything? No. We apologize that this is not a how-to. Honestly, it's not. This is just a, like, if you're going to try to incorporate self-care into your I think it life. is a how-to. I think we gave some instructions. Okay. Um, define what it is for yourself. Yes. Make time for it every day. You know, when you feel guilty about it. Stop it. Take a moment and realize that those feelings are normal, but- uh, Self care is not an indulgence, right? And um, it's not a fix all. Yeah, it's it's preventative maintenance. I agree. Like my Botox, it's preventative. Right, right. Have conversations with others about what their version of self care is, mm. and see if what they do works for you. If what right. they do works for you, great. But it's not one size fits all. It's not a bubble bath with Epsom salts and a, and a face mask for everyone. It works for right. some people, but I bet you the people that it works for are the people who do it every day or, the, right. or they do it every other day. It has to be something that you can incorporate into your routine. If organizing is a form of self care, yeah, <laughs> get, but that's it. get myself a lazy Susan. <laughs> and like we said, you know, for you laughing, it, it's okay for you to laugh while you do something for the family. Absolutely. Right? Self-care can still happen while you're taking care of your own duties. A hundred percent. Absolutely. I would completely agree with that. Mm. That's why podcasts are a part of my life. Shout out to doesn't get a quizzers one more time. Yeah. (laughs) Amazing. There you go. So speaking of podcasts, we want to grow our audience because we like doing this. And this is again, our form of self-care. This matters for us. So this is my call to action right here. I'm going to put this in. If you're looking at your phone right now, whatever it is that you happen to be listening on, if it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Good Pods, please right now just hit the hit the stars and give us a rating. You don't have to review if you don't want to, although that does help, but I know that takes time, but you could just give us a number of stars. I know what number I prefer. I would prefer a five-star rating. However, if you just give us any rating at all, it helps. And we're trying to grow our audience. So um, if you follow us on Twitter or on Instagram, it's easy to find us. We're at CK and GK podcast. Um, If you want to email us, we are CK and GK pod at gmail.com. So call to action. Give us a rating right now. Do it. Yeah, do it. I bet it will feel so Oh, I saw. You did it. You did it. Good job. (laughs) Nice work. Oh, you. you haven't yet. Oh, come Mm. on. If you're Uh, driving, I'm going to ask that you wait till you're at a red light before you do this. Yeah, for real. Mm. But otherwise, just just a real quick tap. That would be your good choice for the day. Oh. You're welcome. I did that just for you. Thanks. So (laughs) look in your wallet. You might have a gift card. Spend it. (laughs) 
<laughs> buy yourself a treat, a reward for right. There's giving your us indulgence. Up. There it yeah. is. There it is. Okay, Jenny's going to say it. Ready? Make your choices. Use your gift cards. Bye. Hey, friends. Thanks for listening to the CK and GK podcast. Find us at CK and GK podcast on Instagram and Twitter and rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Good Pods, or anywhere else that you pod. See you next time.